and look at the results that way as well. When you toggle this on, it's actually a little bit scary because the prices basically go up. So the idea from Intuit's side, QuickBooks side of things would be it would be cheaper if you don't take the 30 day trial. And then if you take the 30 day trial, you get a free 30 day trial, but then they increase the price after that point in time. I would think the idea from Intuit or QuickBooks side of things, what they would like to be happening would be that you completely commit to putting your actual numbers into the uh, 30 day trial so that after 30 days after you're using it you're basically locked in at that point in time and you have to go forward with it unless you want to go through the pain of changing the software again which is a pain to do so i would suggest that if you're practicing if you're testing out the software what you would like to do is at least run a parallel between the the stuff you're putting into the new software here for 30 days and your prior accounting system run it the same numbers on each system for a while so that you can commit to it to see if it's if it's what uh, you would like to do. And generally, ideally, if you're testing it out, you'd like to test it out for the 30 days uh, without being forced to then purchase it at that after that point in time. So you'd like to be able to practice with it and then possibly see if you can purchase at a later point in time, possibly looking into discounts, talking to your accountant to get the best price at that point in time. From a course perspective, what we would like to do is get the software, the sandbox with a free, uh, with just a nothing in it type of situation for a new company file. That type of scenario is perfect when we're trying to practice the setup process, which is often the most difficult process. If you're starting a new company file and you're trying to set up the company file from scratch, that is one of the most difficult things to do because you have to then put in line all of the underlying uh, uh, things in order to get everything set up, like the, the chart of accounts and you know your bank account and stuff lined up uh, if, you, if you're gonna be tying into the bank feeds and that kind of stuff. All that foundational stuff needs to be in place first. If it's properly in place, then it's gonna be a lot more easy going forward. So we would actually like to use this kind of scenario on the second half of the course when we're going to get into the more difficult process of starting a company file from scratch. So if you want to jump into that right away to start a company file from scratch, you can jump to that part of the course. But the easier thing to do at first to get to know the software is to do what often happens when you go to a new company, for example. If you go to another company and you're going to be working in QuickBooks, you're not going to be setting up a new company file from scratch. You're going to be working with a company file that has already been set up. So your goal there is really to deconstruct what has already been put in place and try to try to see if you can understand the process and then continue on with that process, possibly making changes as you go. Usually if the process is built well, those changes being small changes, not huge changes. So that's the first thing that we'll start out with is actually starting a new company file and then saving this for the second half of the course. And you want to make sure that once you, if you're using this for practice, if you can get access to this for practice, you want to make sure that you're maximizing that 30 days, if that's what you have for practice, and then turn it off at the end of that, <laughs> at the end of that process, 